All right, my next guest takes on Michelle Prazeris in the featured FS2 prelims at USC Santiago, Chile on May 19th. He is Zach Cummings. Zach, how's it going? Well, I'm good. I'm uh, doing some shopping with the baby. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, it is Mother's Day, of course, so uh, happy Mother's Day to your family. Thank you, thank you. Uh, other than that, how, how's your day been spending with the family today? Uh, yeah, it has been good. Went and did some some cardio at the gym and made a uh, nice little brunch for for the wife. Who I kind of had my nutritionist make the assist with the, <laughs> the the fancy brunch, but but no, things been good. Awesome, awesome. When are you heading to Santiago, by the way? I leave uh, tomorrow night, actually. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. I mean, you've, you've done the whole fighting overseas thing. You don't feel the need to go, like, a little early or anything like that, right? Yeah, it just depends on where we're going. Um, like, when I go over to Europe and stuff, and the uh, the time change is a big difference, then, then it's a little more important to go out there sooner. Uh, it takes, uh, I don't know, I guess, like, for, for every hour uh, of, a, of a time difference, it kind of takes a couple of days, or a day for per hour. Uh, to get used to it and stuff, so this is only a two-hour difference, so I'll, uh, I'll be acclimated and, and uh, ready to go in no time, so uh, there was no, no need to, to go extra early. Awesome, awesome, and of course you have a big fight coming up, you're taking on Michelle Prazeres. Uh, how excited are you to get to compete in Chile, like a new market that you're serious for? Uh, I'm extremely excited, I, uh, I, I love traveling, I love being able to, to fight and do what I, you know, uh, do I do overseas and, and meet new fans and, and make new fans, uh, you know, everywhere else, especially, and, and just kind of learn different cultures and stuff. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's one of those where uh, going to places I don't know if I would ever travel to, um, you know, outside of this, it's, it's been pretty amazing. So it's just kind of one more one more thing, and then uh, I, I feel like I've been on multiple of these cards. It's uh, the first time the USC's been there, so it's kind of, I feel like I'm obligated to, to put on an extra special show, I guess, just to uh, to prove, you know, that uh, what we what we do is, uh, you know, it's kind of a little special for him being the first time there. Awesome. And and before we talk about the matchup, I mean, last time out you were scheduled to take on Chicago back in January, but you were forced to pull out because you slipped in the bathtub, injuring your skull, uh, your skull, a very unfortunate and pretty scary moment for you. How hard was it for you to pull out because of such a freak accident, but also a dangerous one that you have to be careful about? Yeah, it was, uh, it was very hard, uh, difficult. It's one of those where, um, you know, it was such a dumb thing that I split my head wide open and, uh, I mean, I took a pretty hard, you know, very hard shot to the head, but, uh, the, the scar and uh, all the stitches and stuff, not scar, but all the stitches and stuff I had to get, that was the kind of the biggest deal, but uh, I, I actually, I wanted to continue to fight, I wanted to, I was really close to weight, I just wanted to keep going, and uh, McMahon stepped in and saw the gash in the back of my head, he's like, yeah, there's no way you're going to be able to fight, so they, they pulled it, and it, uh, it, it just sucked, it's been, it's been a long time since I've fought, uh, you know, I've, I've got some... Uh, couple good wins that I'm going to be coming off of, and it's just one of those where, you know, the I had the baby, um, I basically missed the first 12 weeks of her life training for that fight, and just kind of getting ready, and then, uh, not that anything ever makes it that acceptable or, or okay, but I felt like even the, the validation for it was taken away from me, which kind of made it a little bit harder, so, uh, that was, that was the hardest part, you know, plus it was... It's a big name, someone who I've been a huge fan of uh, my whole career, and uh, I was really excited for that fight. So just kind of losing that whole opportunity was, it was terrible, but, you know, the, the injury hit my head like that, it, it, it could have been much, much worse. So happy I was healthy and, and able to get right back into training, and, and uh, I just kind of took until now to finally get into the fight, but I've been begging uh, since, <laughs> since I hit my head. So I'm uh, just excited to get back in there. And, uh, Finally get to perform. I've had a couple, uh, uh, a couple fight camps where I haven't got to have the fight, but just done all the the prep work. So we're hopefully uh, now finally have this one and ready to get going. And like, what was the recovery process like? Was it a cut? Was there any like damage to your actual skull, or was it just a cut? Oh, uh, it was. I mean, it was just. Uh, I mean, I hit my head really hard, the back of my head, and kind of 
uh, flash me, and uh, but it was mainly the stitches. So I had I had to get multiple stitches in the back of my head because it was I mean it was uh, the it was a big cut gash that was almost to the skull. And uh, the yeah, but the uh, the bone was ended up being fine. You know they had to do X-rays and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just a really bad cut, you know, a lot of stitches, so they wouldn't let me fight with stitches, and, and plus, you know, getting the back of your head hit that hard, uh, you know, they didn't want to chance any, uh, you know, injury, or head injury or something, so they wanted me to go ahead and take a little bit of time and, and let it heal, because I was trying to get back in there immediately, and, you know, I talked to Dana right after the show, and he just said, you know, that he gets it, it happens, to so just kind of, you know, make sure, make sure I let it heal that way, you know, if I jump in there, try to fight too soon take the wrong shot or whatever, so that can happen, so. Yeah, absolutely, and were you hoping that the Tiago Alves fight would be rescheduled, because like you said, you know, it's quite a big one. Yes. Game. Yeah, were, were yeah, there any chance absolutely. of that? Uh, I tried, um, I, I was thinking, I thought since uh, everything was cleared and uh, there was no, like, concussion and, and any of that stuff, once I, you know, I got uh, back and then I saw released from the uh the er and stuff i was hoping that they'd be able to just push it back pretty soon uh and then you know they end up giving uh to go a different fight and you know it wasn't me they let him get through there and uh so i mean yeah i lost the, i lost the matchup i was really hoping to keep it uh they didn't really say that they would or wouldn't i was just really hoping that it would happen but uh you know i lost the opportunity but uh, we got this one now, and and that's all I'm looking forward to. So, uh, I'm uh, after after Alves took that loss, I really just want to keep pushing forward and moving forward and uh, looking up the rank. So, I mean, if he would have won, I still would have loved to have that fight again. But um, this, I don't really care who they put in front of me now. I just want to keep moving up. Yeah, and because you're taking on Prezeris, who's moving up from lightweight, he's had a lot of trouble making weight throughout his career, but. Were you surprised that they offered you him? I mean, was he even on your radar considering that he was a lightweight? No, I had, I mean, as well as, I had no idea who he was, uh, but once I, once I saw him, I realized, I remember, I mean, I've, I've seen him fight, as well as where you don't kind of remember his name, <laughs> and then, uh, but I've seen him fight plenty of times and stuff, so I knew exactly, once I, I pulled him up and saw him, I was like, oh, okay, that guy, you know, I remember, I remember watching the Desmond Green fight, and, and all that stuff, so I, I definitely was not expecting uh, him at all for a matchup, but, uh, you know, I just kind of look at it as, uh, you know, they're, they're a little upset with, oh, sorry, my friend just decided to start playing music. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so anyways, it was one of those where uh, I, I just kind of looked at it in a positive thing. I was like, well, you know, he's a he's a 55er that, that's not making weight. and They're going to make him go to 70, and not only that, they're going to put him with the, one of the biggest, strongest 170-pounders out there. So uh, I just figured they're, they're using me as a tool to, to prove to him he needs to make 55. So that's kind of what I'm going there doing to show him that I'm the, the bigger, stronger version of him. and. And you know, just much more well rounded, so kind of see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, because he's, he was on a nice streak, a, a, a lightweight, so he, you know, a win, a win over him is also like, even though this is his like welterweight debut, but it is something because he, like, he, people have been paying attention to him because he's been on a nice, like, I think four or five fight win streak. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's done, uh, he's doing very, very well at lightweight. Um, I, I just think. Uh, I don't know how his style is going to transfer up to welterweight. It's the thing. He's one of those, uh, you know, power power takedowns, power jujitsu. Um, just really tries to, to muscle people over, overwhelm them with uh, with his size and, and power and all that. And I just I don't think he's going to have the frame and the, the size to be able to do that at uh, at welterweight. I just don't. I mean, there are some of the smaller guys that he might be able to, but. Uh, you know, he's one of those where he throws everything he has into striking. The the average size and height and everything of a lightweight is is a little bit smaller than welterweight. So uh, he, he's going to be giving up more reach, you know, more size, more strength. I, I just, 
I mean, he, he's good. He's a talented guy. He's, uh, he finds ways to win. Uh, you know, he doesn't really get tired. He's just, uh, he, he's definitely a tough opponent. I just don't, I don't think what his skill set is, is going to transfer over to, to Walt Roy very well, especially against Walt Roy like me. I see. And, and like, when you look at this training camp, I mean, how do you usually go about your training camps? Are you training with specific training partners, like similar size and frame to Mira Pizaris' game, or do you have a certain regiment that you go through uh, for every fight camp? Nah, a little bit of both. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I, if I look at Southpaws or traditional stance guys, um, I, I, might, I might train or drill or, or go live with a little bit more of one or the other. But when it comes to a, a fight camp, I... I'm always focusing on myself. I'm always trying to get myself better and uh, just keep evolving as an athlete in the sport. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down to sparring and stuff, I mean, especially him since he's, he's so much shorter than the average guy, you know, the 5'6 and short and stocky and strong and uh, a very big pressure fighter. I mean, I, I will try to pick some of those rounds and stuff, but I've also got a bunch of high-level guys that I train with, you know, like James Krause, who's the complete opposite of this guy, but uh, he's still going to give me a solid round. So, uh, I, you know, I, I will pick and choose guys similar to him, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to uh, uh, do my own thing as well, you know, so I, I don't only go with that because, you know, he can... Uh, I don't know. Something can happen, and he might be out tomorrow, and I might have a new opponent. So, uh, you know, I can't really just rely on on something like that. You know, that's these uh, opponents change all the time and stuff like that. And if I just focus on a five, six, this guy, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, maybe something happens, he gets hurt, they bring in a six six southpaw then you know i'm kind of screwed then so uh yeah so i'm always just kind of focused on myself and then i try to see what's coming at me and i'll mimic it a little bit but you know it's like i said when it comes down to it it's it's all about me stepping in and uh and putting my game on absolutely and, and should you beat Pizarus, that would be a in a row for you uh, especially like we said like he's a, he's a guy who's been on quite a streak do you feel it would be time for a ranked opponent next i mean would you say that would be your next goal I mean, you know, build, moving up the ranks is always always my goal, uh, and I've always after every fight I'm always saying I want a top you know top fifteen or or something in there. I you know it uh, a win over Pizarro's could definitely do that for me. Uh, right now, I'm actually trying to focus on myself, and uh, I've, I've had dumb injuries. I've had just little things in life kind of happen, uh, so I've I haven't been the uh, as active as I, I would love to be and stuff I've had, you know, I haven't fought in a year. Um, sometimes I, I get three fights in a year. Sometimes I only get one or two and I, I would love to have three or four fights a year. And I just, uh, I really, I honestly, at this point, I don't care. I just want to keep my weight down. I want to be ready to go. And if the next opponent's not ranked, but I can fight in a few months and, and still get three fights this year, then I would love that. So I just want to, I want to stay healthy keep my weight down and uh and and stay active and stay relevant i feel like if i do that then the uh, the rankings will come absolutely and you do a lot of coaching at glory mma fitness i mean megan anderson is making her debut a couple weeks after you fight i spoke to her a couple weeks ago but what can you tell us about how she's been looking i mean megan's a beast <laughs> that's all there's to it there is uh she she's very very precise power striker and there, there's not many women out there that, that hit with the power that, that she has and it's one of those where uh, I, she, I don't know I, I feel like you know she, she's had some time off and I'm excited for her to show the the mass amount of uh, oh I'm sorry <laughs> some, um, you know just Basically, I mean, how much she's improved. You know, the, the mass amounts of improvement she's she's made in her game. Uh, you know, she's she's getting much much better on the ground. Her striking is just amazing. You know, her clinch game is the takedowns, wrestling, everything. It's just getting better and better. Uh, so knowing that she's immediately stepping in, fighting the top girls in the world. Uh, you know, we knew that she had to be at that at that point as well. You know, and it's I, I feel like she's gonna, she's going to shock a lot of people. I feel like. You know, people are going to go, you know, she's making her UFC debut and all this stuff, but she has absolutely everything 
every every tool there is to go out there and finish Holly and, and with a something devastating. So, uh, I mean, yeah, she we're, we're she's a, a great student of the game. She she works so hard to better herself, and I'm just excited for her to finally step in and you know and have her moment. Very nice. And hearing you speak, I mean, I can tell that you really enjoy the coaching aspect. I mean, is that something that you see yourself doing long after your MMA career? Is oh, that absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I love coaching. It's uh, it's one of those where you know. I'm, I know that I've only got so much longer, uh, you know, as, as my career goes. I don't know when that is yet. I mean, I'm just kind of going with how my body feels, but I still think I got a good amount of time. But ever since I've, uh, you know, I've opened our other location and, and been running it, and I just kind of, it, the general population, the athletes, everybody just, the impact on different people's lives and seeing the growth that, that they have and being, you know, a part of it, even if it's just a small part of life is, I don't know, it's just, a, it's an amazing feeling. It really is. So I, I love, uh, I love coaching. I love helping people and others and helping others reach their goals and, and being a leader and being a mentor for people. So, uh, it's something that, that I will always do. And, um, I mean, I, I've got other stuff on, in business. I would love to, uh, to do, um, but but being in the gym and, and coaching and stuff will always definitely, I'll, I'll find time for it. Awesome, awesome. Well, Zach, you've been very generous with your time, so I know you're busy out with your family, so I really appreciate it. One last thing, how do you see this fight with Prezeris playing out? How do you get the drop in? I mean, you know, he, he's only lost twice. He's never been finished, but but I'm that guy that, that finishes people that, that don't lose, and I've got too many dangerous tools. Uh, I've got too much power. Um, I'm very solid on the ground. I know he is too. I, I just, uh, I just see the the strength, the size, and, and my skill set overwhelm him and uh, and break him down. And then I see me finishing him. I don't know if it's uh, if it's a knockout or or a submission, but I know he's a high level jujitsu guy. But if I if I hurt him with the power that I have, I can submit anybody. So. Uh, I, I see a finish. Um, I, I see probably a second round finish. Break him in the first, finish him in the second. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes from there. All right, awesome, fantastic stuff. Of course, you can catch Zach Cummings in the featured FS2 prelims, May 19th in Santiago, Chile. Zach, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a lovely day with your family and safe travels to Santiago tomorrow. Awesome, thank you.